This is part one of a kokanee seminar I gave at Cabela's in 2013 at the Captain's Weekend. And we're talking kokanee fishing. Kokanee fishing is a ton of fun for all ages. Here in part one, we'll talk about the equipment you need and more for kokanee fishing. Let's talk about the basics of kokanee. Um, you know, kokanee are landlocked sockeye salmon and they come in a variety of sizes. I know that, you know, if you fish locally, you know, we can get little fish like this all day long or you can really get some big ones. And we have a lot of waters that we can fish for kokanee. Um, they're primarily plankton feeders. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, but that's why, that's how some of the tackle that we use come into play when you're fishing for kokanee. Um, and they like to feed on mysis shrimp. Okay, look that one up. That's pretty interesting. They actually don't look anything like shrimp, but mysis shrimp. And our freshwater lakes have these little shrimp in there. Now, kokanee have to be specifically targeted. Can you catch kokanee fishing for trout? Absolutely. But really, if you want to catch a lot of kokanee, you got to target them. And we'll talk about that today. Most importantly, they're attackers. So how many of you guys have been out there and done some kokanee fishing? You ever notice that rod just go all of a sudden just wham? Those fish attack that bait, okay? They don't come up from behind and, and grab it and touch it. They slam it. Okay, so they're going to slam that lure and they like to attack. Now, if you have the right type of lure and it's in the right color at that moment that you're kokanee fishing, that triggers that attack. Okay, but scent is the final key and I am a firm believer in scent for kokanee. I'm not fishing for kokanee if I don't have scent. Just not going to do it. Um, regardless of whether I'm using corn, I'm using gulp, or I'm using some type of gel on my spoons, I'm using scent because it really triggers that attack and it gets them to hang on long enough so that them attacking the lure takes the line off the downrigger clip and I now have fished the boat, okay? So, unfortunately, kokanee are unpredictable. I've seen guys, and it's even happened to me, you go out, You've got maybe a troll pattern that was really good one day. You've got a setup that was just killing them. And now you've got nothing. You're marking fish. You can see them on the fish finder, but you have nothing. So what do you do? Well, you need to switch up. Whether that's color, whether it's action, whether it's your speed, you need to change something. And with kokanee fishing, it's great because you can catch, I mean, the limit's like 10 in most lakes. But if you're not catching fish, you need to change something so you're getting fish into the boat. And it's going to be one of those three things. It's going to be either color, action, or speed. All right, so it's actually pretty easy to figure out what you need to do. Now, as we all know, kokanee do have soft mouths. And if you try and horse that fish in, you're going to lose it. So the right gear is important. And we'll, I brought a couple rods and uh, with setups in here and we'll talk about that. Okay, so I like to use seven to seven and a half foot rods for kokanee fishing. Could you go out there with your five foot trout rod and fish for kokanee? Absolutely, absolutely. I like the longer rod. I like to be able, in, in my boat, I like to be able to push that rod into the water to keep the fish in the water until I'm absolutely ready to land it. I don't like my kokanee jumping up and throwing the hook, ripping that hook out of their mouth. These rods here are Akuma SST 762Ls. Good rods, really inexpensive. So whatever you find that you're comfortable with that's going to help you fish kokanee, go for it. But this is what I'm using for kokanee fishing. Now, can you fish kokanee with a spinning reel setup? Yes but I really like the level wine reels a lot better. It has more control. I can really get that drag nice and light. I don't have to worry about it in the rod holder, maybe accidentally coming out, you lose a rod. So I like the level wines and I'm using the Abu Garcia 5500 C3s. 
tried and true classic. It's a good reel. You can really punish the drag system on it, and it's going to last for a long time. Now, on my main line, this is actually 10 pound test. I have gone as light as 8 pound on my main line, but I like 10 pound test. And I'll use this same line fishing and this same rod. I'll fish it for pinks uh, later, or maybe sockeye. Okay. My leaders, I like eight pound leaders. Now guys, I like fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon lets some of our lures really action the way they were intended to. The problem with your low stretch lines though is that they're low stretch and that with kokanee and their mouths are so soft, if you don't play the fish correctly, you're gonna lose a lot of fish. Believe it or not, I'm running mono leaders and I don't have a problem. Now, I run a green, okay? I wanna have a lake color, so I'm running green. Um, but I don't use fluorocarbon for my kokanee fishing, and I haven't noticed a difference in how many fish I'm putting on, okay? But I do have a little more stretch to the line. I run size 10 terminal tackle. It, it works fine. Now, keep in mind, I use Vision Tackle. Vision's tackle size 10 some of the other brands, you could buy a 10 and you put them together and it's too big. If that's the case, find terminal tackle that's smaller. Okay, maybe you need to downsize, but the way Vision makes their tackle, 10s are just the right size and everything seems to be balanced out. Now, a lot of guys do not choose to use, use these snubbers. The thing about snubbers is and I have caught fish without using a snubber on the line. And what it is here, I'll just use this rod as an example. It's a piece of surgical tubing, okay? It's got a uh, snap swivel at one end and a barrel swivel at the other. In the middle, there's Dacron tied, and the snubber allows this action here so that you don't put too much pressure on that fish, right? There is a limit. You pull until the Dacron's straight, you know, I've never seen a kokanee pull that hard, but it allows the whole setup to be softer in the mouth of a kokanee so you're not losing them. Um, I think trolling snubbers are important. You know, if you're out there on a windy day, um, you get a fish that, you know, is, is really just off the hook or you get a bigger fish. Um, I think you're gonna find more fish to the net by using trolling snubbers, and they last forever. Just don't let them sit in your boat in the sun. You do that, surgical tubing is gone. Um, take them off, take all your gear off. But trolling snubbers, I think, are really important. Okay, electronics. Now, you guys, if you're on the lake, you're trolling around, you're like, ah, where are the fish? If you've got downriggers and you don't have electronics, you're playing a guessing game. And that's okay, that's okay. I mean, you can ask the boat past you, how deep are you? You know, he's catching fish, I'm at 45 feet. All right, drop your stuff to 45 feet. But if you're serious about it, you need some electronics. Now I'm gonna say guys, that any electronics is better than no electronics, okay? So whatever you can get, that's better than not having anything. But if you have the ability, the money, Power and pixels cannot be beat, okay? The wider the cone area that shoots to the bottom, the more fish you're gonna see. And a lot of people don't understand this. And we're not gonna go too deep into this. I just want you to understand this right here. Come on, there we go. Okay, cheaper electronics. If you have an 18 degree cone and you're in 40 foot of water, you're only seeing a 12 foot circle on the bottom. Okay, so look at the chart. 20 foot, it's a six foot circle, right? At 100 feet, it's only 32 feet. Pay a little bit more money for better electronics and maybe you get, and there are wider cones than 48.6 degree, you could get a 60 degree cone. But a 48.6 degree cone, you see a 17 foot circle at 20 feet at 40 feet deep, you see a 34 foot circle. At 100 feet, you see an 86 foot circle. There's a lot of lake 
that I troll and I'm at least in a hundred foot of water. So I see a bigger swath of what's down there and I can see more fish. So think about that when you're thinking about electronics, okay? Downriggers, another essential piece of equipment. Now, let me say this, early season, you can go kokanee fishing and have a real far setback and not even use any downriggers. You put your gear 100 foot back, it's gonna be just under the top of the water, the surface, and you're gonna slam kokanee. Why? Because they're way up there near the surface getting sun. Happens all the time. Early season, I may mark fish low. I may not be necessarily marking those fish that are right up there in five to 10 feet of water. So I'll throw a different rig out there and I'll put it 100 feet behind the boat and I'll troll it and boom, get hit after hit after hit. You know, this is fish on. So you can do that in early season, but kokanee can be fished a broad, at a broad time. A lot of people think kokanee, May, June, July. I fish kokanee in August and September and they're not colored up. They're not all, you know, ready to go spawn. They look good. They're good looking fish, nice and bright. Downriggers for the majority of your kokanee season, they're a must. Um, you can use manual or electronics. I mean, I, I got on Cabela's website, just on Cabela's website, you can get, a, you can get into downriggers for as little as 90 bucks, or you could spend as much as 700. So downriggers are definitely gonna help you out. What's super important is the kind of release you use. And I wanted to bring one of these guys here um, this is a mini power grip plus by Scotty. Um, now when I get my releases, guys, I like them to be nice and long. I want to be able to reach them, lay them into the boat. Um, you need a downrigger release for kokanee and trout fishing. You don't want to be fishing your, your big releases that you're fishing for salmon in the sound. Okay, um, An adjustable release that can go as light as a half a pound of tension, that's really good, and that's what you want. Um, if any of you have never used releases, this just clips onto your downrigger cable, and this drags behind, and then you have your setback from your downrigger clip, okay? So, I wanna talk about this picture for a second. Clearly, this is a downrigger ball, and what this person has done is they have set their release up on the ball. Now you can see their lines coming down to the downrigger clip and now they have their setback. I don't do this and I don't suggest you do this. Um, what this can cause is that if all of a sudden you made the wrong turn or it gets more shallow, maybe you're close to the bottom, you get hung up on something, not only is your ball going to get hung up, but all your gear is going to get hung up and there's a good chance that depending upon what's happening, it can get wrapped up and you're gonna have a disaster on your hands, okay? So what I like to do instead is I like to run my release two to three foot above my ball. I wanna get it away from the ball. I've even gone as high as five feet, okay? So if you do start hitting ground, at least your gear is still, if you're paying attention, your gear is still off the bottom and you can get that downrigger up, whether it's manual or it's electronic, you can get it up off the bottom real quick and still save your gear and not have to pull everything up at one time. Now, I don't have a picture for this, but I'm often asked, can you stack rods? Absolutely. But let's talk about stacking rods for a second. There is a point where there is too much gear in the water, okay? Kokanee are attracted to your attractors, but if you overdo it, you may be pushing fish away, okay? So even if I had a boat of six guys, I'm running four rods. I don't want to overdo it. And when I, when I stack a rod, I'll put my second rod anywhere from 10 to 15 feet above the other rod. The setback is usually a difference of five feet. So let's say on the bottom, uh, the bottom gear, I'm gonna go with a 25 foot setback from the clip. My top rod's a 20 foot setback. Okay, so that's how I do that. Well, that wraps it up for part one. Make sure you move on to part two, where we'll start talking about lures, 
tractors such as Dodgers and multi-blades. 